Uh, England lose at home at Wembley in a friendly against the Brazil team that's not at full strength, that's missing a lot of high profile players. But phenomenon 17 year old Endrick scores the decisive goal to see Brazil win the game. Nearly actually got a second there, the very end of the game, at, um, just before full time, uh, was on the break. Uh, you know, had a relatively tame effort. 17 year old Endrick. Today, uh, we're going to talk about Endrick, England, and Southgate. Uh, welcome back to Football Yannick. It's been a little while since it's been a little while since I've uploaded. I do upload. I do upload on this channel though. Let's just have a little quick look here. When was the last time I uploaded? Because I want to see how bad it is. <laughs> uh, oh, six days. Don't forget everything I said. I upload all the time. I upload all the time to Football Yannick. So therefore, subscribe to this channel. Hey, subscribe. Easy. And like and comment and all the lovely supportive things that you guys do for me, the content creator here. Anyway, welcome back. This summer, we're going into Euros in Germany. Uh, England are one of the fa or the top two favourites with, with France. You know, Brazil, fortunately, aren't in Europe. <laughs> um, and you watch games like that. Granted, I know, we're missing players. We're missing Harold Kane. We are missing um, Bukayo Saka. Um, who else were we missing? Other players... Uh, other good players as well. But we did have, um, you know, Foden, Declan Rice, Kyle Walker, of course, first choice goalkeeper. We had good centre backs, of course, Stones um, and Maguire was, whatever you think of Maguire, he's generally been good for England and he's got a good relationship with John Stones. John Stones is, you know, of course, sensational. Uh, Bellingham, Gordon's a great player. Um, I feel we. I think we're gonna see Cole Palmer play in the next in the next game. He was uh, obviously announced not gonna be in this one. I do wonder if in time we uh, <laughs> see some value of Jordan Henderson in the midfield. It's not a vintage Brazil, but they still started with a front three of Rafinha, Rodrigo, and Vinicius. So that is like Brazil, um, Barcelona and Real Madrid front three, and then midfield Gomez, Guimaraes, and Paqueta is great. Granted, the back line isn't necessarily the best, and they are missing both Edison and Allison. But we didn't test them. We didn't test them. Um, Savio came on, Pereira, Douglas Luiz. They do have good players, actually. And, of course, Endrick, as well as a couple of others. We saw Kobe Manu make his debut. We were on Konza and Dunk, which are... And Gomez, all good enough, relatively good defenders. Bowen and Rashford, both top-end Premier League operators. And Kobe Manu, who is a good... Very, very good up and coming player, though. Whether he'll be massive for England or not. Uh, Endrick, of course, we can talk about Southgate in England in just a moment. I do want to talk about a few things. I'm a Chelsea fan, so I'm going to talk about the Chelsea players. They were bad uh, in this game. We'll talk about that because that's the most experience I have to reflect on. Southgate generally and um, Endrick. Let's quickly talk about Endrick now. So he was the decisive player. What a story. 17 year old Endrick scoring his first international senior goal uh, against England away at Wembley. You know, I know it's a friendly, but it's massive for him. Massive. It's massive. So this kid's come from Palmeiras. Uh, Chelsea wanted him. In fact, we were very, very close to signing him. I think he was happy to join Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea didn't want to sign him in the end because he cost 60 million big ones for a 16-year-old. And, of course, he wouldn't join for a couple of years. Um, I think he didn't join. He's waiting for at least one year before he... He's already met Real Madrid teammates and Bellingham and Vinicius and all that. Um, but he he was, according to reports, like he was cool to come to Chelsea. And I'm not going to like... This could be like one of the biggest fumbles of all time because I think he's going to be like one of the greats. Uh, and that's why Chelsea was scouting him. Like, you know, Chelsea, for all their faults at the moment, they um they do know good young talent, uh, you know. So, you know, we, we've got a few shit coming purchased of our own do you know what I mean so um like you know Pires and some others that are coming through he looks like an excellent acquisition similar so Pires would have been the same as sort of Endry but um yes so Real Madrid said we'll pay 60 million for him I this isn't a Chelsea video but I, I'm not going to criticize Chelsea for not spending 60 million on a 16 year old um if anything they should be praised for like being like, yeah, we can seriously trying to get this guy when not many other people were, but Real Madrid were as well. 
anyway, he is a striker, a Brazilian centre forward. He doesn't seem that big. He's strong. Of course, his celebration when he's not, you know, in awe of his first senior goal. Yeah, he does like the the, the muscles, doesn't he? But um, he doesn't look very tall. I don't know how tall he is. He looks quite petite still, but he's stocky. Um, anyway, like... He will be... He's not like a wide flair player like, you know, Neymar Jr., Vinicius Jr., freaking Rodrigo, uh, Rafinha, like, you know, pick all the others. Do you know what I mean? He's not like... He is a centre forward. He'll play down the middle. He'll run. He'll be strong. He'll be technical. He'll score loads of goals. And um, what a story. What a story that he comes on. And granted, the, the, the goal itself, the winner of the game, was a tap-in. Of course, it was capitalized of a Vinicius Jr. Uh, chance and he uh, he was uh, Endrick was offside Vinicius wasn't uh, in a break Vinicius takes the chance it deflects and at that point he's coming from an onside position Endrick and he taps it home he nearly scored another and what a story that would have been if he doubled his numbers right at the end there but um incredible incredible young player you know remember the name people were saying this a year 18 months ago but um yeah I mean, he scored the way he scored. I know it's a friendly, but it's still a high-profile game. And this was like a tasty game, bro. It's a friendly against Brazil in the middle, late of March. So, you know, you'd think like, ah, a little exhibition, but it was tasty. You were Jude Bellingham, like, trying to kill people with the sly tackles. Um, you know, friggin' Vinicius sweating, bro, and also diving in the box. Um, people wanted Lucas Pakatar. He should have had seven yellows. He was really he was sticking it on people. It was tasty, and for a long time, it was a good contest. Um, you know, and I, I thought this is a great opportunity for England to beat Brazil in their own patch through... Largely industry, like it's a good Brazil team. It's not the best Brazil team, and it's not their first choice. And they certainly haven't got their first choice manager. They wanted uh, Carlo Ancelotti, of course, uh, originally, but he's decided to stay at Real Madrid. And of course, both the wingers or two of the free forwards in Rodrigo and Vinicius, they love um, Ancelotti. You know, they're probably happy he's staying at Madrid, but they would have loved for him to, if he's not staying at Madrid, come and be their national coach. So, um, you know, there would have been that. Um, so it's not vintage Brazil. It's not first choice manager. It's in fact it's not second or third choice manager. Also, I'm reliably informed by Andy Brassel, European football expert. And um, it was just you know at the beginning of the game, kickoff. I was like, right, Anthony Gordon, pressing machine, playing at the pre- you know high level Premier League football, and he's really really good at pressing. We can really. St- I mean, look, they've got Premier League operators in this. Brazil team as well of course two in the midfield in Guimaraes and Pacata so they know they know the drill and Rafinha has played for Leeds bro do you know what I mean high octane pressing um he's done that do you know what I mean so it's not like they were like a bunch of like floaty skill boys that didn't <clears throat> want to get tackled they've got well physical players they're very fast and they're capable of playing at this high octane Premier League pace but despite that, I still thought, you know, Conor Gallagher in the midfield, like, really getting on him. Gordon pressing the so-and-so out of them. Watkins is a notoriously strong, fast-pressing centre-forward. You know, the, the the silky artistry of Foden, you know, Carl Walker on the right. Obviously, he came off injured at halftime. But the way that, you know, the way the game panned out wasn't good. From a Chelsea point of view, I'll start with Chilwell. Chilwell was bad. Um, Chilwell isn't a bad player. I know he was trending on X, formerly known as Twitter. You know, people like slating him. He's not a bad player, Chilwell. He's actually very good when he's on form. Uh, he put in an absolute worldie in a Champions League final against Man City that he won. He was amazing in that composition. You know, you could say maybe that was left wing back and not left back, but he can be an excellent left back as well. The point is, he's just not been in great form lately. When he first came back from his injury, he looked transformative. He's not been playing well. He didn't play well here. I don't think there's too much into it, more to go into it, other than like he's not been playing well. He's not found form when he had a bad game, but he's not a bad player, too well, and I'm generally a big fan of him. Uh, if you know, and if Shaw's not fit. Um, Southgate will be looking probably to start Chilwell in the Euros unless he just really drops stinker after stinker, which we'll have to see. But there's a great player. You know, there's a Champions League winning player in there and there were shouts from the best left back in the Premier League for a long, long time. And he's 26, 27. Like, he's not dusted. So we'll see what happens with Chilwell. But he was pony here. Let's, let's you know, let's let it be said. 
Um, Gallagher, the other Chelsea boy. This is going to be a slight Chelsea topic, but I do worry for him. I think Conor Gallagher is a really, really good Premier League operator. Um, he's unique in terms of his like tenacity, high octane play, and how he can play for ninety minutes and just smash it every every game. Um, I do worry for him though because this formation that we played four two three one, um, he'd probably would have been better off playing in the Brazil team, which sounds crazy in terms of their shape. But uh, his 4 3 one he played in a double pivot with Declan Rice. Now, that's something that I wanted to see. And, like, before this game, and actually before lately, and I'll elaborate on that in a moment, I would have been like, yeah, in the Euros, I want to see Bellingham in number 10. I want to see Declan Rice in a double, double pivot slash lone pivot with a player next to him that can sort of help him out and do both. And for me, that was obviously Conor Gallagher. I don't want Calvin Phillips because he just doesn't play football anymore and he's been awful for West Ham. I don't want Jordan Henderson because, you know, who does? <laughs> you know? And unless you think John Stones and you play Maguire in Dunk, which, by the way, is legit, legitimately, I think, a good option because he, obviously John Stones can't basically play as a midfield for Man City. Um, it, it, the obvious thing was like, yeah, we'll pay Conor Gallagher. Because he'll work really hard, he'll be good in both boxes, but he'll make sure the other team can't play. And that's what England need. He was bad in this game in a double pivot. And also, he was bad for Chelsea recently when he was dropped into a double pivot. Now, he can play pretty well as a number 10, which he's been doing a lot for Chelsea this season and getting loads of plaudits. He ain't playing in a number 10 over <coughs> Jude Bellingham. And to be honest, again, to end this Chelsea chat, I said on my Instagram, I, I feel like Chelsea, a number 10, in what a number 10 is supposed to do. I think Chelsea have better options. I think Nkunku, obviously. I think Mudrick's been playing better as a number 10 of late. I think Cole Palmer, who's predominantly a right winger, but he said himself he likes playing number 10. Num is a better number 10. And I think Carney Chukwameka, who's a Chelsea player, might end up being our first choice number 10 if all things carry on the way they're going. So that's four players I think are better than Gallagher and number 10, and I don't think he's good in the double pivot. Now, I think he's an amazing player, by the way, Conor Gallagher. I really need to nail my colours to the mast here. I think he's amazing. He's amazing as essentially a number 8 and a 4 3 3. But in this 4 2 3 1 that England played here tonight and Chelsea play, he's not going to double pivot and he's so so in a 10, but there's often better options. So, uh, at Crystal Palace, when he had that amazing loan season, he played as a right number 8 in a 4 3 3. And uh, unless England play that, I do worry for him. But he's a useful player to have, regardless, just because of his profile and style and energy. Like, you want him in there because he's a great trainer, he can run for ages, and he's technically decent. Do you know what I mean? So, and in theory, he has got a goal in him. I know that's sort of dried up a bit, but he can get the odd assistant goal as well. So, he's a great squad player, but is he a starter? Not a 4 2 3 1 formation for me, unless he sort of bucks his ideas up a little bit, which I would love him to do, by the way, as a Chelsea fan. Now, this isn't a Chelsea video. I just wanted this because I've got an authority on those two guys because I watch them all the time. Look, Kyle Walker starts as a right back for England, uh, obviously came off injured. I feel like, again, biased Chelsea. I think on form and fitness, I think we've got the best right back in the world in Reese James. Yeah, I'd say in the world, because he's he's the full package. You could talk about Hakimi, talk about Trent, but Trent needs to sort of invert into midfield and have cover. I think Carl Walker's amazing, but um, I think he's getting on a bit. And also, I think I just think I think Reese James is the sort of heir to the Carl Walker throne in terms of England right back, personally. But you know, if Walker's there, good. We've spoken about Chilwell, Stones, and Maguire. Maybe I do really like Lewis Dunk. Obviously, Declan Rice picks himself in the midfield. We've talked about the midfield conundrum. Uh, and then you've got Harry Kane in front of Bellingham and you've got two wingers. Now, I would I would play, if I know Foden played on the right here, I'd play Foden on the left, a left foot on the left, and I'd play Saka or Palmer on the right. Now, Palmer's trajectory is becoming insane. Um, as, as it stands, I think Palmer's the backup for Saka because his numbers are undeniable. Only Duke Bellingham uh, has got more goal involvements than him as an under-21 a 21 or under player in Europe. Um... I believe, and I think like I think uh, certainly English. I think it's like him, Vert, and Palmer are like the three top. So I think Palmer's definitely up there. Um, and maybe if he clicks with England, we'll see what happens there. Maybe, maybe we'll find a way to get him into the team. Probably, probably not though. I think that'd be too tricky. Certainly a member of the squad, but the players are there. Watkins, but we. I don't know, man. Like. Uh, Southgate, let's talk about him a little bit. I'll come a bit of slack because 
people love to hate on Southgate, but his body of work at England has largely been excellent. And I don't mean because he's reached a semi-final and a final to a major tournaments uh, consecutively, which, by the way, by England's recent standards, is success alone. But what he's done culturally, he's made players want to play for England again, which, by the way, wasn't always the case. He's made fans want to support England again. He's made England no longer a target of the media, which was long a long-standing problem. So there's a bunch of stuff that he's done well, and I thank him for it. But... And also, I do have sympathy in a game like this. It's a friendly. He's rotated somewhat. You know, he's playing this peculiar double pivot <laughs> that I wanted, by the way, but it seems peculiar now. You know, trying out Gordon, who's very tenacious and good, but, you know, Watkins, is he the second striker or is it going to be Ivan Tony? Do you know what I mean? It, it, maybe it should be Ivan Tony. Tony's probably got more quality than Watkins, but Watkins having a better season, more numbers. Um, and, you know, you've got no Kane and other players, but. Phew, I just find it it's really hard in it to like get turned on by Southgate's football like because you get excited the game starts oh yeah Bellingham and Kane and all these players and you start loving England again it's not like Ugh, like the cliques like Lampards and Gerrards and Skulls and you know you don't want the other team that you don't want the Liverpool the United player to do well or Chelsea player no you want all they're your boys now like I'm sick to death of watching Man City win domestic football in the Premier League. But I, when Foden puts on an England shirt, I'm like, yeah, go and get him. Do you know what I mean? Like, get him. Um, which is great work by Southgate because it, was, it wasn't always like that. Anyway, it's just... Uh, it'd be really interesting to have a conversation with like a Foden and a Walker who both played today and be like, what's... Dif-? And Stones even. What's the difference between... I know international duty, you get very little time with the players, but like, how are you being told to play Guardiola and Southgate? Is it? it it's so difficult to criticise because conservative, pragmatic football wins you tournaments. France did it. Other Portugal did it recently. You know, World Cup Euros, and it's just so. But it's so hard to get turned on by Southgate's football. Anyway, I've gone on quite a lot. Um, hopefully I think this will be the last summer of Southgate I think his tenure is done hopefully we do well in the Euros I don't think we'll win it but Endrick big 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 main story anyway I've gone for too long let me know what you think comment down below thank you for liking and subscribing and hopefully I'll see you back here soon peace